<clears throat> Chapter 1 Review for Geometry. Okay, I'm going to try to make this video and not make any errors or mistakes, but I probably will overlook something or something like that, so I'll probably have to make a little addendum to it in class tomorrow. But let's start with number one. It says, which angle is a right angle? And that's a very easy question, everybody. Can identify that right angle as B and B. Number two says, each unit on this map represents five miles. What is the actual distance from oceanfront to seaside? From oceanfront to seaside. Oceanfront's located at three, negative two. Seaside's located at negative two, four. And we're gonna use the distance formula. And the distance formula says x sub two minus x sub one all squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all squared. And we'll let this be x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. So the very first thing I do is I label. And number 2, I substitute. Here we go. x sub 2 is 3, right there. x sub 1 is negative 2. Watch your signs. y sub 2 is negative 2. y sub 1 is 4. The next thing I need to do is subtract. Three minus negative 2 is 5. Negative two minus four is negative six. The next thing I need to do is square. So it's gonna be 25 plus 36. The next thing I'm gonna do is add. So 25 plus 36. is 61. So it's the square root of 61. Well, they really want me to give the, um, the distance in miles. So our first thing I'm going to have to do is figure out how many units that is. So I'm going to take the square root of 61 and it approximately find the square root button on this little handheld calculator. That's not it. Okay, the square root of 61 is approximately 7.8 units. Each unit represents 5 miles, so when I multiply that by 5 miles, it's going to give me 39.05 miles. So that is very close to answer choice D. Number three, name the plane represented by the top of the box. The top of the box contains B, A, I, D, C, and J. And you can use any three of those. B, A, D is the answer that I have. Number four says name a line, name the line in the plane shown in the diagram. So the line is PQ and the plane is named with three points, but they have to be non-collinear. So you can use P and you can use Q as long as the other one is non-collinear with it. So you could call it PQS. Name the intersection of plane QMW and plane RMW. And they don't give you a picture, but you can answer this question just from looking at their names. What do they um, share? They share M and W. So the answer to that would be line MW. 
Number six says, which plane is parallel to plane A, C, G, E? There's A, C, G, E right there. And the one that's parallel to it would be the one that contains B, D, F, and E. This one with polka dots. And you can use any three of those letters, B, D, H, is one way to name it. You could have named it B, D, F, or F, D, B, any of those. Seven says find A, C. When it doesn't have a mark above it, it means the distance. And so the distance from A to C is negative five to two. That distance is seven. Number eight says if T is the midpoint of S, U, that would mean that this section and this section were congruent. Find the values of X and S, T. Well, if T is the midpoint, then 7X equals 3X plus 28. And we need to solve for X. So we find that X is 7. If X is 7, then ST is 7 times 7, which is 49. 9 says, which is the midpoint of AE? A is located at negative 6. E is located at 8. They are 14 units apart. They are, so the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. D is the midpoint because it is 7 units from each. 10 says MO bisects. That's a powerful word. It cuts these into two congruent angles. Angle LMN is the big angle. Angle LMN is 5X minus 27. Angle LMO is X plus 33. Find NMO. The diagram is not drawn to scale. Well, they tell you these two angles are congruent. So this one must also be X plus 33. So X plus 33 plus X plus 33 is equal to 5X minus 27. Then we just do the algebra. 2x plus 66 equals 5x minus 27. I think we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. 66 equals 3x minus 27. Add 27. 3x is equal to 66 plus 27 is 93. Divide by 3, and I get x to be 31. Now the question says find NMO. So that would be 31 plus 33, which would be 64 degrees. 64 degrees for number 10. Number 11 says find the distance between these two points round to the nearest hundredth. So we're going to use the distance formula. x sub 2 minus x sub 1 all squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all squared. And step number 1 is to label. So this is x sub 1 y sub 1, x sub 2 y sub 2. And step number 2 is to substitute and when I substitute that in, I'm going to get 9 minus 1, all squared, plus 8 minus 5, all squared. Then I'm going to subtract 8 plus 3. Well, they got to be squared first. Square them. 64 plus 9. Add 64 
plus 9 is 73. Take the square root. And that is 8.5. The calculator says 8.54. Round to the nearest tenth. 8.5. Number 12 says a high school soccer team is going to Columbus to see a professional soccer game. The coordinate grid superimposed on a highway map of Ohio. The high school is at the point 34. I'm going to sketch that. One, two, three, four. High school. The stadium in Columbus is at 7 1. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, one. Columbus. The map shows a highway rest stop halfway between the two cities. So this is three, four, and this is seven, one. The rest stop's halfway between there. What are the coordinates of the rest stop? Well, you need to find the midpoint. So you're going to average. each of those. So you've got x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2, y sub 1 plus y sub 2 over 2. So this is 3 plus 7 over 2 and 4 plus 1 over 2. 3 plus 7 is 10, 10 over 2 is 5. 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 over 2 is 2.5. So this is the midpoint. This is the coordinates of the rest stop. Then it says, what is the approximate distance between the high school and the stadium? So now they want you to take those two points and they want you to find the distance between the two. So, distance formula tells me to use x sub 2 minus x sub 1, all squared, plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1, all squared. That's the square root of 4 squared plus negative 3 squared. That's the square root of 16 plus 9. That's the square root of 25, which is 5. Now, one unit on this map is 9.4 miles. So, 5 times 9.4 is 47 miles. 13. Find the coordinates of the midpoint of the segment whose endpoints are given here. So this is x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. So 5 plus 7 over 2, 13 plus 15 over 2. The formula we used was x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2 y sub 1 plus y sub 2 over 2. We're just basically finding the average. That'd be 12 over 2, which is 6, and 28 over 2, which is 14. 14 says, Naum wants to free, put a fence, or can freeze, wants to put a fence around his rectangular garden. His garden is 37 by 41. The garden has a path around it that's three foot wide. Three foot on this side, three foot on this side, three foot on this side, three foot on this side. So 37 plus those two sets of three really gives me 43. 41 plus two sets of three gives me 47. How much fencing material does he need? He needs 43 plus 47 plus 43 plus 47. If you add all that up, it's 180 feet. Number 15, ask us to find the circumference of the circle in terms of pi. C equals 2 pi r. That would be 2 times pi times 50, which is 100 pi inches. 16 says James is adding a ribbon border to the edge of his kite. Two sides of the kite are 9.3, while the other two are 12.8. How much ribbon does he need? 
So basically, you're finding the perimeter. So we're going to add those up. 9.3 plus 9.3 plus 12.8 plus 12.8. And I got 44.2 inches. Write an expression that gives the area of the shaded region in the figure. You do not have to evaluate the expression. The diagram is not drawn to scale. Okay, this is 11 all the way from here to here. But the shaded region is 3 less than that. So it is 11 minus 3 for this dimension. Now if you go ahead and write 8, that's perfectly fine. This dimension's 10. We're taking 5 away from that. So the second dimension is 10 minus 5, which is 5. It said you don't have to evaluate it, but if you did, you would get 40 feet squared. Our P, Q, and S collinear. P, Q, and S. No, they're not all three collinear. Two of them are collinear at a time, but not all three. Number 19, R, C, G, and H. Collinear or non-collinear? They are non-collinear. 20, name the fourth point on V, S, Y. That is a slanted plane, and the fourth one is X. 21, name this ray. You need to name it ray AB. You can't name it anything else. You cannot call it ray BA. You must call it ray AB because it starts at A. Name the ray opposite QS. That would be ray QP. If EOF is 33 degrees and FOG is 30 degrees, what is the measure of EOG? That's the whole thing and that is 63 degrees. Number 24 says if BOC is 37 and AOC, that's the whole thing now, is 72, how big is AOB? So this time I'm going to have to subtract. 72 minus 37 is 35. 35 degrees. Name the four rays shown. Well, you got V, X, okay, V, X, and then you've got X, Y, and you've got X, V, you've got Y, Z, you've got Y, X, which could also be called YV. There's a bunch of different ones, so if you have four different ones, then you are good. Okay, this concludes our study guide for chapter one. I hope you did great.